Welcome back to Carrera, Italy. We have mixed pool play, the last round of pool play. Catch up versus deep space. Deep space starting on defense, getting a turn here. Khan picks up. Underneath to Hillman and calls the foul. Benji Reese and Sean Cole for you in the booth. How are you doing, Sean? Doing well, thank you. It was a pretty chaotic last round. I had a great time wandering around the field watching some games. So feeling pretty hyped about the tournament as a whole at the moment. Hillman looking for options. Coming towards the far sideline is Ridlover into the end zone for Khan. Break on the first point for Deep Space. 1-0 they lead. 1-0, good point for Deep Space defense. Nikita Koshov coming underneath, getting a block. And nice calm offense, working it down that open sideline, finding open players wherever they needed them, really. This is a, a game that doesn't really mean too much for Deep Space. I don't believe they can go through to the next round, but they can mess things up for Catch-Up, who uh, can go through to the next round. So Catch-Up's fate is not in their own hands. Yeah, exactly. If Catch-Up win this game and Leftovers beat Disconnection, Catch-Up would take that second semi-final spot out of this pool by virtue of head-to-head. -head. Yep, they beat Disconnection yesterday, so they'd be level with the German team, but they would go through, as you see, on head-to-head. -head. But if they don't win this game, that is all moot. Yep. Uh, and Deep Space, even if they win this game, they finish at three and two, and then even if leftovers beat Disconnection, Disconnection beat Deep Space. Yeah, I was talking to a couple of them yesterday, and they were basically talking about, well, let's go out, enjoy the game, win, and uh, try and mess things up for, for catch-up. That's their motivation, to try and... Play not, necessarily a, not necessarily against catch-up, but more just like, let's, uh, let's do what we can to make it as interesting as we can. We did stream catch-up yesterday, in that maybe upset win, over disconnection, struggled, got beaten really comfortably by leftovers when catch up, weren't at their full strength, and then they had a tight universe point loss to Smog. Deep Space started fast here, that was a good layout attempt by Tom Davis. I think it was more a put off D than getting a hand on it, couldn't quite see from this angle, but it was a, a really good bid attempt, and Deep Space had this disc back. Low grab made by Davis. Looking for the reset into the backfield for Moss. Fakes once, twice, going with a high release no into the backfield for Joyce Quat. Not finding a lot of separation for players downfield. Having to play it tight at the back. Down the sideline, Davis again, similar position to where he's had it before. One into reset, no, squeezing it down the sideline. Too far for one and not far enough for the other. Gilboy couldn't get there and neither could Moss. Good bid from Gilboy, but it's a tough position there. Like you say, he was, Davis was isolated on the line. We saw the deep space stack drifting deeper and deeper there. They were getting further and further away from the handlers as the handlers were going backwards to retain possession. And at that point, it becomes very hard to move it. This time, catch up looking deep, trying to catch up to it. Pun not intended that time, it's Krail, but he can't get there. Pun not intended, I don't believe you in the slightest. Genuinely, that time it wasn't. <laughs> well, not the last time we'll hear it, but yeah, the wind is coming as, as, we're, as we're looking at it and as you're looking at it on your screens from behind us, going from uh, the near side to the far side, and you can see the wrong angle on the disc, it just pushed it out towards that sideline. So, uh, Deep Space, who, as I say, have started fast, they're going to get another opportunity to get a break here. Could be two breaks uh, in the first two points, which would be a pretty incredible start. So back in play, first pass, centers the disc. Now going back towards the sideline for Gilboy. Gilboy opens it up, underneath it, Moss is the target. Moik closes the gap and knocks it away. That's a really, really good D. Gets there just ahead of Nick Moss, knocks it away just as Moss is about to get there. And that is a really needed intervention for catch-up because if Moss caught that Davis was running miles free down the other sideline and it would have been a pretty easy goal. Great block there. Good angle on it. Breshko makes the first cut underneath. First pass continuation and then it stops redirected into the backfield for Schitter. Schitter finds Breshko. 
Looking around, oh, miscommunication. Shitter was coming through, but the disc went into the backfield. Gilboy hustles over to it. Wants to reset the disc, does so. Third chance this point for Deep Space to get the second break into the end zone. This one is floating. Can it be tracked down? In the end, maybe the two of them got in each other's way a little bit there. Davis and Moss. I think so. I think it's another one where Davis is laid out for it. Moss may have been able to turn that in a little bit easier, although it still would have been an incredibly difficult catch because they are both right at the back of the end zone. Nailed on. Greatest opportunity, IMO. That's a good point, actually. They are both there. If they talk to each other, Moss can potentially let him know and just pop it back to him. I think, I think Davis puts Moss off there. Good D. Something that we saw catch up be very good at in the stream game yesterday was when they had multiple receivers going for deep cuts. Good communication about who was going through it. Short field turnover. This time, time number four, it works for deep space. And they take a 2-0 lead. A 2-0 lead and a concerning 2-0 lead for catch up, I think, because this is not deep space necessarily getting blocks. The first point was a good block from, uh, from Nikita, but the, the, the second point here is all miscommunication turnovers, a bad execution huck. Short, giving them short fields down here twice. It's the kind of thing that catch up are going to need to clear up because uh, that is the kind of stuff that does not win you games, Benji. No, if you want to be in the semi-final, then this sort of uh, this sort of game where you know that you have to win to make it, and for the other team, they're only playing spoiler. It's uh, yeah, you feel like there should be more riding on it for you, but maybe the pressure can be. Uh, can be harmful rather than helpful. Absolutely. I mean, with the uh, ultimate world writer for the mixed division here, Ned Garvey, spoke to uh, both these teams yesterday, actually, and Catchup was saying that they are treating this game as a quarterfinal. They're looking at this game as a quarterfinal. There's obviously no quarterfinals in the mixed division. The structure, as you said, goes straight to semis. But if Catchup don't win this, they are not through. So it is a de facto quarterfinal. And that pressure, as you say, could be, could be telling with these miscues, miscommunications that they have not been having all weekend. For deep space, the result a little bit academic, it's just about whether they finish third or fourth in the pool. Either way, they're in this, that same bracket. I think. Although there might be three-way tie shenanigans that put them out of it. No, I think that is correct because uh, I don't believe Gold have a win so far in that pool. So third and fourth is, the, is where they're going to be looking at, I believe. So catch up, still looking for that first point of the game. Trying to squeeze that one in there. Stall out called. I think everyone has finally noticed. Looks like they're having a discussion about the stall out, as always. When was the last time you saw an uncontested stall out, Benji? Uh, let me have a think. Yesterday. Ah, oh, well, there we go. Clearly, I wasn't watching that game. It's such a tough call, stall out, because everybody always thinks, obviously, you release it as the person's about to say 10. And it's such a judgment call. Very tough to tell. Understandable there's always a discussion about it. And it's been retracted. So we continue with the play as it happens. So I think it sticks with the first receiver. Back in play here for catch up on the far sideline. Shooting into the end zone, and despite a clambering effort, nothing for Lean Hart to do. I'm not quite sure what the what the issue with the catch up offense is beyond they are just making mistakes that they can't really afford to be making. It doesn't seem like the spacing is off, it doesn't seem like the the structure is off. They're just cutting into areas and then not executing. This one, air uh, underneath it, it's but expensive. well read and well weighted. Rowe makes the catch. Finds Kofshov in the middle. Fakes it to Khan. Instead, finds Sol. Sol downfield to Rowe. And then squeezing that one there for Kofshov. Deep space break again. 3 0. 3 0. Starting the game on D. Not going to get too many better starts than that. And. They have definitely earned it. They, this is not a situation where they're getting a bit lucky. 
They are taking you back to the fist that Catch were giving them, and Catch Up take a much needed timeout to try and gather themselves. As you said ben, earlier, Benji, I think the pressure might be getting to them slightly here, and the Knights might need to recenter themselves and refocus a bit. So, as Catch Up press the reset button, we'll metaphorically do the same here in the booth, and we'll see you very shortly. Welcome back to EUCF 2022, live here from Caorle, Italy. Benji Reese and Sean Colfer, although Sean is currently congratulating Randler players. Yeah, after their fantastic win against Mooncatchers in their quarterfinal, going to their second consecutive semi-final. Absolutely fantastic outcome for the team from Dublin and one of those games where they really earned it. They were absolutely outstanding. Defensively, their pressure was incredible. Uh, Mooncatchers struggled, I think, to throw a little bit in the, the wind that picked up a bit in the last game slot, whereas Randler were grinding points out, grinding unders, and making it really tough for that expansive Moon offense. Great game, as I'm sure we could look forward to this one being. So catch up have dug themselves a big old hole here. Kyle, pick in the center. It's been more the catch up offense looking out of sorts than uh, Deep Space going out and hunting down blocks, but they've been taking advantage of the opportunities they've been given. They certainly have. They've been very clinical, the D-line. There's a couple of turnovers, a couple of miscues, but overall they've been very, very good. Lovely little inside break there to Jungwert. Overthrow and maybe a miscommunication. Clients maybe thought there was some backup, but there was none. Another miscue from this offense. Good boy downfield for Moss. Moss rips it. He's looking for Davis, and he can't get there. I think he misread it slightly and he came towards it when he should have continued to cut straight. Yeah, the arc of the disc just taken it slightly away from him. It's a, a decent throw and I think a good shot. Just not quite there for the deep space D-line offense. But given how they've been playing so far, I'm sure if they try that again, it'll come up perfectly. If you're worried about wasps getting on the food, by the way, you should just spray some bug spray on it. Spray bug spray all over the food that has just been delivered to us. I think that's a good idea. I agree. Is it toxic? Probably not. Eh, it'd be fine. Shitter brings it to the front of the end zone. Vertical setup here from catch up. Oh, faking the scuba instantly. That would have been ambitious in this win. Instead, blading towards the far side line. Lina Ordner makes the catch. Going back here to Shitter. Faking the first backhand and then calling. No, we're just going to calm it down a little bit. Break towards the far side line to Kleinz. Clients to Kyle, putting it deep, rating for Brechko, but that's too far. Can never catch up to it. Again, again, Benji. I'm not D even planning it. <laughs> you have to remove that from your lexicon for this game. Yeah, it's a, it's a good shot in terms of it's a good decision, but just a bit too flat. Always running away from a really difficult catch to come back to. But uh, another chance for this deep space offense now. Gilboy goes towards the far sideline. In towards the centre to Ho. That one might have an opportunity to get there for clients. No, very nearly did so. Disc checked in, I'm not sure why. Sean's indicating it's a travel, but that's not stoppage, so. Uh, but Tim is American, so as soon as the uh, travel is called, he just goes back to his spot and taps the disc on the ground, even though he doesn't need to do it. No. 
Nick suiting down the sideline. Nick Moss again. Can't connect deep. That time, Gilboy wasn't even really making the cut. No, it looked like he backed out because he saw there was traffic downfield. It would have been an almost impossible throw. Moss pulled the trigger regardless. Inside break to no one. This, this is so sloppy from catch-up. It really is. This catch-up offense does not look like they are clicking in the slightest. That inside throw is obviously there. It's a good decision when you've got someone there, but there's just no one there waiting for it. I'm not even sure what he's looking at, really, which is disappointing because catch-up have been excellent this tournament so far. Gilboy is going to take the red zone timeout here, using this opportunity to draw up something in end zone play, maybe, to get the quick score in. So we'll take a little breather as well, and we'll be back with you on the other side. We are Hive Ultimate, a group of players and coaches from all over the world working together to progress the next generation of Ultimate strategy. We've helped top teams win world championships and new teams introduce the sport in a fun and inclusive way. Search for Hive Ultimate on YouTube to learn more about our cutting edge strategies and to see analysis of world class teams. To find out what Hive can do for your team, head over to our Patreon page where you can gain access to our exclusive drills and session plans and to join our worldwide community of coaches. Get ahead of the curve with Hive Ultimate. ECF 2022 here. Mixed pool play action. Final round of pool play for these sides. Deep Space up 3-0 here on catch-up. Deep Space coming out of London. Catch-up, the Austrian champions from Graz. And uh, Deep Space have the chance to break here to go 4-0 up. Their O-line hasn't even taken the field. No, nope. no one on the O-line has even touched the disc and they have a chance to go a commanding 4-0 lead. Deep Space, Austrian, uh, so catch-up, the Austrian champions. Deep Space won Southern Regionals in the UK. So the best, best team at Southern Regionals, but finished below Reading at Nationals. Yeah, and Reading are going to be the highest finishing UK team at this championships. Gilboy, resetting into the backfield and the turnout strikes again. Yep, yeah, Afi Fudding just slightly too far away. Gilboy didn't put enough on it and it hits the turf just before she can grab it. She was open for so long. That's such a weird misconnection. It is. Breaking down the far sideline. Fail. Popping this one out into space for Mesner. Little inside seam there, through to Kleins. Kleins pops that one up. Schitter sits it out into space, but that is a brilliant layout block for Tom Davis. I don't think that was his mark. I think he's taken off. He's read it coming, taken off and knocked it away, but there appears to be some kind of call here? I think, I think the discussion, discussion is whether he caught it. it. And I think, I think he, he does, does catch it and, and then ground strips himself. I mean, the way the rules are, if he's caught it and intentionally dropped it, that is a turnover. But it doesn't look to me as though he's done that. It's not. There's no double turnovers. There's no double turnovers. In that case, I don't really understand what the it discussion is It would about. mean that Davis does have to take the disc, though. Oh, I see. Oh. I don't really see the advantage for either team, to be honest, there. Uh, like you say, it looked like a ground strip. It looked like it just came out of his hand. Great block, though. It's a phenomenal block, and they are just going to say, OK, fair enough. Gilboy is going to pick up. Uh, I think they're going to check for a different disc, because as you see, he did land with that kind of edge down. And, uh, yeah, that's warped it quite a bit, isn't it? Yeah, it's not the most tacoed disc I've ever seen, yeah. which actually uh, came from a player involved in this game uh, way back in 2017. Who's that? Uh, Sophie Brechko playing for Austria under 17s, lay out right in front of her, caught it, and then landed with the disc, you know, fully edged down on the ground, and it was properly tackled. Wow, okay. Unbelievable catch. Well, catch up, we're going to need a few of those. That time, having made the brilliant layout block, Davis can't complete the simple underpass. This is a strange game so far, Benji. A strange game. It is a strange game. On the sideline, shooting for the end zone is Schitter. Finally, catch up, get on the board. 
down they, the line for the score. They really needed that. They really needed to stop the bleeding. A fourth deep space goal would have put them in an unbelievably different position right off the bat. So getting that offense conversion is something they desperately needed. And I think the fact that they were able to work it a bit beforehand as well. We saw on the previous possession just for that insane layout D that the handlers were kind of popping it into space and running onto it. They were allowing each other to move around a little bit. It wasn't it looked like they had some chemistry as opposed to earlier in the game where it looked like they were just really struggling to move it even five, ten meters at a time. It looked like it was a struggle to move it at all. So the fact that they're starting to find a little bit of chemistry, find their feet a little bit, that could be a good sign for them in the next few points. But now we're about to see Deep Space's O line for the first time, see what they look like. It's interesting because as we said, it felt like catch up were turning themselves more than Deep Space were getting blocks, although, as we've seen, Deep Space were getting some blocks, as we see there from Davis. He's read it beautifully, isn't he? Read it beautifully, just coming in and intercepted it. But you're right, catch up are the architects of their own downfall at this stage. Even though Deep Space are playing well, this is on catch up. So let's see if they can get themselves back in the game. So O line maybe coming in a little bit cold, having not taken the field yet this game. Here's Layla Denniston. Represented GB both in mixed and in the women's division. That one is floated a little bit. Sam Vile catches. Oyama. Baker on the sideline. Shooting to the end zone. That one's going to be tipped. It might still be alive. No, not in the end. Yannick Hildebrand got enough of a hand. Yeah, it looked like a tough shot, but there was a space there. But Hildebrand with a really good reaction D. Fisher can't quite get that second effort. But overall, the deep space offense looked pretty good there. It's just a really good D in the end zone. Kleinhappel, who is uh, not adverse to the big shot, centers. Setina on the far sideline. Getting it back here. Now finds the underneath pass. Kneely. Into Eisenberger. That one. Ooh. Sam Vile strips Kleinhappel. Instantly uh, accepted. Good spirit all round. Agreed. You could see them both agreed immediately. Nice to see. Good, a good quick agreement. And that one. Ooh. The old spanner, the atrial, pops out of the hands. It's funny to go from a really good good catch that was a, a strip straight to a, a slightly missed one. But another chance for this O-line, who's D again. They, they look pretty good on D. Uh, Ayama on the disc has been a new addition this season. has been central to their offense all year. Sam Vile, one of the coaches for the GB World Game side, finds Denniston downfield. Denniston with a sumptuous deep look. Sets that up brilliantly to Lee for 4-1. Leila Denniston, she's a brilliant cutter. That's what she's kind of known for. That's what she's made a name for. She's very fast, got great coordination, good footwork downfield, and has got some great layout catches in the recent past. But she is also an extremely accomplished thrower, as we see there. Beautifully weighted disc into the end zone. And the deep space offense, you said they might come out cold. Looks like they're in pretty good nick at the moment. So a bit of a battle for catch-up to try and get back into this game, I think. Yeah, still not out of reach, certainly, for catch-up. There was the uh, the strip from Vile. And they really set up this isolation well to Deniston. Turns, pivots, and just sees that wide open channel and throws it right down Broadway for the score. What's the Italian equivalent of that? Um, Valor de Valid Broad? Valor de Broad? No, no, but like if it was like when we were in Barcelona a few years ago, it's like you throw it right down Las Ramblas. Um, St. Mark's Square. Yeah, That's but Square's not. If yeah. anyone knows a, a, a famous Italian thoroughfare, let me know. That's not just a Roman road. Oh, uh, unfortunately, it is a Roman road, you're right. Yeah. yeah. All okay. right. I'll, I'll, I'll bear that in mind. I'm glad we worked that out. Moik. High release for Mesner. Here's Kreitz. Kreitz to Mesner. Coyle. Moik again. 
Shooting deep, bleeding it. I think Kreintz was the target. Very ambitious throw. Maybe too ambitious. I think when your offense has been struggling to find that cohesion as well, it's a surprising choice because that is a very tough throw to execute, as you say, Benji. So going for something like that, at this stage, a surprise. We know that Davis is not shy of an athletic